<laughs> Here we go. With You'll never here guess. In the Kickstarter, <laughs> here in the Kickstarter offices, oh, excuse me, right, specifically in their screening room, which is really nice. How many does this seat, Liz, cook uh, now? Ish, 50-ish down here. There's another 12 or so up on the balcony. Let's start with with, with uh, your ad that you were doing, your little PSA. Yeah. Actually, mm-hmm. Elise McCabe, who is the director of uh, narrative film here at at Kickstarter. We're what? in the screening room, and, and a lot of the filmmakers... <laughs> <laughs> and now we're also acting like, you uh, know, we didn't already discuss it, but a lot of filmmakers who listen to the show would be uh, really, and that are locally based, would be, you know, re- uh, re- great, uh, glad to know that, that this, there's a resource here with this screening room. It's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Da, 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 da. No, um, yeah, we have a, yeah, we have a 50 person screening room. And just over the last year, we've, um, we kind of, we've just tried to open up the office generally to, to kind of our community i mean particularly our local community because that's who it's useful for um so i think last year we had about 18 teams come through and screen a a, a version of their film somewhere between kind of assembly and fine cut um they've screened it for backers they've screened it for funders and executive Mm -hmm. producers and creative teams and just you know it's it's like not it it can be a little challenging sometimes to Mm -hmm. get a nice a nice comfortable room with a big screen. Liz, how tall? Do you, how big is the screen? Well, it's a little taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> I made the claim that I was the tallest person at Kickstarter, thinking that That's there's true. probably one or two other people taller than me. But it has been proven that yeah, like, it's it's I'm it's pretty much it's in un- the middle. What's it's, your height? I'm five nine. Which is, I guess, tall for, for a woman. woman. I guess so. And you okay. know, she towers above me. But <laughs> I think my claim is that I'm closer to the shortest person at Kickstarter than she is to the tallest. But anyway, the screen. The screen. Uh, it's like a f- fifteen foot tall or something. But, uh, okay. Yeah. It's, right. it's, the point is, though, that <laughs> if you were to, <laughs> it's as big as any screen in a in a most right theaters. And Ooh. if you you show if you brought like your producers or backers into the screening room, they would be impressed. Yeah, to exactly. To see a, a rough cut screening, I mean. And it's a comfortable environment, preview. exactly, in, in which to kind of give creative feedback. Yeah. And, and it's just sort of part of our mission to be, just be present in, in the kind of creative lives of our filmmakers. That's you know? great, and yeah. And it's free. And it's free So of people should know, yeah. It's just a way to open Who up. do they contact? People should write film at Kickstarter dot com. Okay. Okay. You know, we also have a uh, we have a Google form. Oh, good. Yeah. The oh, there l- is. Yeah, the link to which I is probably a series of X's and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and numbers. So just yeah, write to film at Kickstarter dot com. And then they'll they'll put you in touch with this fil- form. Maybe that's a good way to do it. And then you fill out the form, and then then you have a conversation with a human being about yeah. the, yeah, this one of the us. potential event. <laughs> right. And the other one of us is Liz Cook Mao, who is uh, not only the director of uh, documentary films here at uh, Kickstarter, but also a uh, new mom. Mm-hmm. And uh, you just got back from maternity leave. So again, congratulations on Thank your you. your daughter, Lila, who's yeah. five months old. Yeah, all correct. Yes. How did Thank I know you. that all? I just, I'm so, <laughs> so invested it's in... So sm- you're so smooth today, yeah. Adam. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a... Just this <laughs> info utterly, just utterly, tripping off the tongue. Utterly unrehearsed. And uh, I myself did a Kickstarter here. So we're, and I'm actually, we're all today, as we sit here in the screening room around this t- table, we're, we're drinking tea. And I, this equipment has all been <laughs> recently purchased with my Kickstarter um, yeah. backing. I know. Money. Congratulations. Thank you very yeah, much. Congrats. And I want to thank you guys for all the preparational work you were very available, kind of went in very carefully and slowly and prepared as much as as one could be I, I i learned a lot more when i was doing it of course mm-hmm. as i was mentioning that what would you have done differently <laughs> what would you have done differently i would have had my contact list a lot more buttoned up i have a great potential contact list because of the nature of this work every week i have on new people that i'm supporting yeah what what, what better candidate for a a podcast <laughs> yeah, when a tit you, for you, tat support like support relationship uh, yeah mm-hmm. I, I prefer quid pro quo Okay. okay. <laughs> you, you you prefer Latin over tit for tat. Well, All right. well it's, uh, maybe people don't know what quid pro quo means. Okay. Um, but uh, no, it's not quid pro quo. But um, you know, otherwise, I I, I I would owe my androgyna quite a bit of money. 
No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, yes, I do. But she was very generous. Family members were very generous as well as the film community. I w- must say, I do for by way of example, my recording studio that I'm going to be building, you know, when I have a permanent space, is called the Neil LeBute Recording Studio because that filmmaker gave oh, a, cool. a, a large amount. That's do so you have cool. A, do you have I a have place in mind already? Or is that well, I... I I'm looking at it. Yeah, <laughs> right here. Sure, just set right. up in this theater. <laughs> you know, like a DJ. Maybe up there, put a little booth up in the balcony. <laughs> you the can, um, you can have this space if you fill every seat for each podcast. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, if you bring fifty-four mm-hmm. different, unique, oh, wait a minute, people <laughs> per <laughs> podcast recording, you can have it. All right, it's quite a, um, it's quite a challenge. Yeah. Well, we want you to reach. You know, higher. <laughs> I do too. Push yourself further. Right. No, I mean it's very true. Um, so that's something I would to answer your question though. I would have I would have been um, as as good a list as I had. That was the that's the what do you call it? That's the girder. That's the um, the engine. Yeah, for uh, like for the success yeah. of my campaign, and I was rushing to keep up all the time. A lot of the work and the energy I expended during the uh, campaign could have been done weeks before. Right. So that's that's my message to those. That's a good one. Yeah. I think it is a good one. I think people underestimate how important email is with this kind of stuff. It's one-on-one. It's yeah, just, it's the, it is. It's the very basis of, the su- of a successful Kickstarter. Beca- oh, and then the other thing that helped, it wasn't a, uh, something that w- everybody here will know about it, and anybody's done a Kickstarter, uses green, wh- what's that uh, company for sending out blasts of uh, tweets? Green uh, Inbox, I think it's called. I it's, mean, a, it's a I product. L- I literally don't know. Oh, okay. There's a product out there. You can't, I suppose, <laughs> w- on like space. Thunderclap? Well, <laughs> there might be others. I'm sure there's others. Maybe so. There, th- that, that basically, like, for instance, on Facebook, you can't send out, We you can't send out on Facebook, like, more than 200 right. messages yeah, or yeah, invites, yeah, yeah. you know. But this company will do it for you. So you can do a blast to as many as you want. It does a certain amount every day. So you should do it early in the campaign because... Otherwise, it'll keep doing it after your campaign's over. <laughs> so, because it does like two hundred, like a tweet. I only used it for Twitter. I didn't use it for Facebook. Or for Facebook, I reached out to people one on one. Yeah. For those who I didn't have their email addresses, I use Facebook a lot. But for for twi- Twitter, um, I use Green Inbox, and it basically it just like envelops your your account. Or you you write a message, and then it'll send out two hundred. It does the of that mess copies of that message to all of your. And you can make it sound personal, right? Hello, friend. It, you, yeah, but when it's hey c- but it would say How's hi Kickstarter, mom? which it probably did because I follow Kickstarter on Twitter. So it, oh, it probably said it, okay. it said hi Kickstarter, check out my campaign, blah blah blah. Hmm. And so, it, but yeah. it, if I send if I follow you, it would say hi Elise. Yes, yeah, so it does sound look personal because a lot of people responded and a lot of people responded, um, found out about the campaign, shared it, or yeah. or donated or contributed. I should say so. So again, very joined. Very Joined you. Joined. Yeah. Right, the terminology that um, is important. Well, you know what? I know um, maybe it seems <laughs> sort of splitting hairs, but I actually think uh, it is kind of, the terminology is kind of important in terms of also how you feel, right. how you're positioning it and, and where you put it in your own heart and mind, mm. which is, you know, I don't, w- I don't want filmmakers to use the word kind of give and pledge and please and desperate and because <laughs> I think, it, <laughs> right well, I think you terms. know I think I, I, yeah. I've heard people kind of say well what you got to do is you've got to you just got to seem really desperate and I'm just like no can we sort of preserve mm. the dignity of creative people mm-hmm. and that kind of and I think that actually starts kind of at home I think that starts with like a, as a filmmaker I am like I'm I'm making a I, you know, I'm, I'm inviting you to to kind of join a, a creative process, right? Um, and I, I and I don't and I'm, I don't I don't think that's just positioning. I think of it actually as really important. That's what you were saying a little bit earlier about how mm-hmm. you know um, it's like something that you're really proud of the podcast, and it's sort of enabling that, and it's less about just asking for money from you more than it's just asking for money to support this thing that you really love. Well, but you know. Everyone loves. I agree that going into the campaign and as you're creating it and, you know, literally figuring out what is the messaging, what is the branding, all that stuff, and what are you trying to do and the broader picture, that what we're talking about is is absolutely true. It's not just about asking for money. So you're building a community around your project, your process, what have you, 
but there's no better way to get people to invest themselves than to literally invest, right? To give us some a little bit of money, even because that's why those small invest, the small pledges are really great because it's just that's all that it's all it takes. It's like when you do a screening, they always say charge something, right? Because then people won't come if it's free. It doesn't have a value to them. But once they've invested a little bit, even they're going to be somehow feel more part of that yeah you know? so that for that purpose i think the money is good you know um let alone you what you would need to do with it of course it's important for right. you yeah th- at the beginning especially i'd never used the word pledging i was told by taylor by david by you guys probably that you know t- it's about joining and 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 getting on board and all that stuff and by the end of it, of course, it's like, hello, can I please, please give me some money? Because <laughs> I've that's got three hours and I've <laughs> still got $1,000. That's good. You know, so all I'm right, okay, you can right. do it in I'm the desperate. last, you can do it in the last yeah. three hours, but not yeah. before then. Right. No, it's, it's yeah. also just funny to me as well uh, for a country that is uh, where so much creative content is produced off the back of, uh, you know, a, 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 a culture of philanthropy. Mm-hmm. You know, that actually this is sort of the coalface of philanthropy. It's, you know, the budgets are smaller. What you're asking of people is smaller. Um, but it really is just this m- much the same as, you mm-hmm. know, patronage and and philanthropy, which is writ large all over the place. It's how films are made. It's how NGOs are run. It's how, you know, it's it's now how... News, how journalism is is um, is is funded. Um, so sort of yeah, it's just, it's interesting that that kind of disconnect that people find it very uncomfortable on right. a yeah. sort of personal level, but actually you know the but actually large swaths of culture are supported in exactly the same way. Anyway, yeah, absolutely. How many thousands of film projects? Right, you, that's what we oh, I asked before. Yeah. How many thousands of film projects, roughly, over the last nine years of kick. Is Kickstarter been around for nine years? Is that what we're saying? Yes. Yep. Okay, so it's coming up to tenth anniversary. Or is it coming up to ninth birthday? I think I think it's ninth our birthday ninth in birthday. April or so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And in so that time, it's twenty four thousand film projects. That's really remarkable. Have been successfully and funded. You guys have really su- been there. I mean, on some level or other. I mean, are, I imagine some some of those campaigns were run with a very independent approach. Perhaps they weren't tapping into your accessibility li- literally meaning you guys dan before uh before and uh liz liz home, liz home before dan or and george earlier on schmaltz. oh george schmaltz who's mm-hmm. been on this podcast mm-hmm. so i did do something at kickstarter hmm. i forgot i did a, i did something with george about oh. yeah there was a restoration s- yeah. yeah how did you know that because uh, that's his what he was, that was, that was his big yeah, so I did something with him, and it was like part of a uh, lore, which is 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 one of my things too. Actually, I really love film restoration and preservation as an ongoing theme. Too. Mm. Anyway, so but there are, there must be some percentage of the population of people that have just sort of figured it out, They're just doing it on their own. They don't yeah. lean on you guys. I think if we're doing our job right, it is going to be the vast majority oh. of people who don't know okay. we exist. So I was the really. Only. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if we can create really? enough resources that can be useful enough that people can take this as a tool and mm-hmm. sort of make it their own and figure out the best way to do it for themselves, then we're really doing a good job. And for the projects that we're sort mm-hmm. of more closely handholding or you know working with, collaborating with, um, we've been really selective actually in the last couple of years um, in terms of like how we're deciding you know who we're helping and oh i see you know because it is it does feel kind of like endless like you could there's just so many projects yeah i was um, i was thinking if there you know y- you know you were on maternity leave as we said liz and and, and yabo the filmmaker yabo boyd who's also worked for chicken and egg she she was here temporarily and she gave me a couple of hours of time uh all set but it was r- just completely just all about strategy help for getting those numbers up and everything and I'm like, how is she doing this for like <laughs> hundreds of other people? <laughs> Twenty four thousand projects. <laughs> I know it. Well, so the mind boggles. No, no. quite at the moment there might be a few, f- uh, few of those, but um, uh, and some of them are been Oscar nominated, right? Mm-hmm. As we already. <laughs> as we now I can't yeah, now I can't remember what we've. Um, I don't know. <laughs> what <laughs> are, have we have we talked about the Oscars? Yeah, we no no. I, I mean, we have. We but have indeed on the earlier iterations. Of earlier this. iterations. Our and pra- we're so yeah the the, the underlying. Um, raison d'etre of our 
vi- my visit today was these um, films that are are currently nominated, or we can say shortlisted too, yeah. even though they're not nominated now. But that still, what an enormous it thing to be uh, to go from doing raising money at, through crowdsourcing to the point of you know being nominated or being nominated. International so notoriety. I Seriously. believe it's the eighth year in a row that a Kickstarter-funded film has been nominated for an Oscar. It's almost right off the bat, right? Because this you're going into the ninth year, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, that's really yeah, uh, and and um, I can't remember what year it was. It must have been two thousand, maybe thirteen. That Innocente, which was a short doc, uh, won. Mm-hmm. It was uh, Sean Fine and Andrea Nix Fine, mm-hmm. and and that's so the film, um, yeah. So the film that's nominated this year is Loving Vincent for mm-hmm. um, uh, feature length animation, animated feature, I guess. I watched it with my son. Huh. A new spin on the same tired <laughs> anecdote that we're going to How did your son like it? <laughs> yeah. He, d- he did. He enjoyed it. We were, uh, he had the flu. Oh, okay. And uh, I was th- kind of quarantined with my son. We were stuck inside for like four or five days, you know, while this thing ran its, its right. cycle. And um, so I, I, w- I was fine, but he was, uh, and, and, I, and I said, let's watch this. It's supposed to be fabulous. Uh, you know, it's like a, Every frame is hand painted, and it's right up my son's alley. He, I think, he really was. He dug it, you know. So he and he did. He, is he a budding artist? Yeah, he just applied for the uh, school of high school of art and design. Oh, oh that's but cool. But in the film, doing wanting to do like because he does all the stop animation stuff. Oh, neat. But he's you huh. know he's he's also been doing it since he was like eleven. How which old is he? How old is he now? He originally 13. learned how to do oh. it. He got his first tutorial on how to do that, and what the whole idea of stop animation at the Museum of the Moving Image oh, which cool. I just took them to one day and we had nothing to do and, and they were doing a class in the building you know and from then on he got he got completely addicted to this th- approach to filmmaking you know and uh, but yeah he really we really enjoyed watching it, Loving Vincent and um, it, it was uh, it was just because I had heard about it through a friend of mine who's an art teacher that how every frame was hand painted by a bunch of different trained artists right yeah, and that and that's what the go. yeah, and that's what the filmmakers uh, raise the money for to train fifty painters to to paint yeah. in the style of Van Gogh <laughs> slash Van Gogh. Yeah, we have, uh, we're just plagued by inside <laughs> jokes now. because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, it could devolve. Inside. It could devolve if, yeah. it, if it hasn't already. Uh, um, it's a remarkable film about um, the this um, uh, uh, what would you call the guy? He was a uh, Relatively connected to Vince Van Gogh, right? Who, who, and he goes, he goes back to the, the the town in France, I suppose, right? France, where the south of France, where where Arl, Arl is in the. I think you're right. Dutch painter, right? Used Dutch yeah. by birth, but maybe one of his parents was French. Oh boy, <laughs> Mrs. Wexler is looking down at me right now. <laughs> my art teacher from grammar school. Yeah, and uh, to kind of investigate. To figure out what w- you know, what happened? Why did he commit suicide when just days earlier he supposedly wasn't? Uh, hmm. in such a, but the film is like, gorgeous, and, like, and everybody should see it. For sure, for sure. And it was, it was, it's the only, um, it's the only film that's been um, nominated, Kickstarter film that's been nominated this year. But um, we had two others that were in the shortlist. Which uh, the documentary uh, Unrest? Yes. How did I know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, it's unrest. One to see. It's really one to see. You should I, check it I out. I haven't seen it. It's really amazing. I mean, yeah. incredible. Yeah. Um, premiered at Sundance last year. Uh-huh. Uh, Won an editing award at Sundance. Which which award? The editing oh, editing oh, award. Oh, okay, yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And went on to win awards at festivals all over the world for okay. the last year. And um, it's about uh, chronic fatigue syndrome mm-hmm. and is led, it's a f- sort of a first person journey. Um, Jennifer Brea is the, d- the director and she um, has chronic fatigue syndrome and she has been able to really, in an amazing way, um, galvanize a community of people who are also sort of plagued with this disease and mm-hmm. sort of elevate all of their collective voices to bring more awareness around the subject mm-hmm. and um, I honestly think it's really just made that whole community visible when they just weren't and felt like they weren't for so long. So it's continuing to do amazing things. I'm on their newsletter and I feel like I'm constantly just, they're just sort of presenting staggering facts about, you know, how yeah. many people have been able to share it and, you know, what progress has been made in terms of research 
and funding that is now being you know turned towards that um, area and it's just amazing I have to now <laughs> watch the movie don't and bring that. her on and great you should bring uh, Jen on yeah. because she is she's f- so smart she's so sm- oh. she's so smart she's a force of of yeah. nature and sort of and interact. which runs ra- against this this idea which uh, you know is you would think you know w- you don't know what chronic fatigue syndrome is i mean most people don't and uh, well you, i guess you will after you see the film but and then you're saying she's like a uh, dynamo she's an absolute dynamo she was in the middle of her phd and she was doing How can I, you have I, that? <laughs> I think she was um i th- i think she was uh, anthropology was her what is her area of of study and she was um abroad mm-hmm. doing phd research Amazing. when she when she contracted okay. flu and then oh. when she got home it okay. she kind of either didn't get over it or had a, a kind of a weird relapse and that's what it turned into oh, and and gosh. then and then she could no longer continue with her phd but eventually she oh. rerouted her attention yeah. to you know to investigate this like un, unresearched or under researched, underfunded area. Yeah, right. Um, and, and and stigmatized because, like, I, I mean, yeah, uh, totally. Um, because I, I think it's one of those things where, you know, now so many, uh, what would you call them? I guess pathologies are are, yeah. are labeled now that, and we just a lot of people t- will just not really take them seriously. No, totally. But you know, this is a thing, and the th- I've looked forward to seeing the documentary. What I'm thinking is these nominated, uh, excuse me, shortlisted films would make great screenings here we could, I could yeah probably, I, could, I would love to do a screening of that you of know, that maybe, film maybe film wax yeah we should slash I mean we need to or yeah kickstarter slash film wax. I would love to be yeah. able to help do that and know. the shorts as well because we have an animated right short that was shortlisted as well mm-hmm. uh, which was in a heartbeat Esteban yeah and Esteban Beth. Bravo Bravo and ah, Beth David so they got 34 million hits on YouTube Apparently. 34 million. Is that what you said? And, yeah. some, and thousands of likes. Two million thumbs up. Thumbs Two up. million thumbs up. That's so many digits. <laughs> Wait, how do you have... Because like I was saying before when we were talking... That means 32 million people watched 32 it. 32 million. Didn't, and didn't give the thumbs up, but... I'm going to venture to say there are feature films that are actually nominated for Oscars that have, don't get that many views of the film. Like that... Do they, sure. I mean, you know... That's the beauty of being able to put something out on YouTube and and have it and have that tidal wave kind of take on a life of its own. Yeah, um, I watched Phantom Thread last night, so that that was like the last m- film I saw. The uh, uh, that's in the oh, category. That's, yeah. Would you give that two million thumbs up? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have that many thumbs. <laughs> I, I wouldn't give it two. I give it one. Really? Yeah, one, I, I enjoyed it, up. but I, I I mean you know it's I haven't seen it yet. I haven't either. Yeah. I really want to see it. It was though. the last one. I've seen all the other. Okay. Almost everything at this oh, point. That's great. But um, it's not like I, I just it just sort of happens over time. Right. <laughs> you know, and then all of a sudden the Oscars coming up, so I feel compelled to to finish it. Yeah. And the, see the last couple, because yeah, so I can sort of follow and make my own decision. But yeah. Well, you know what we'll do? I'll do uh, because we're running low on time. Is I will um, I will post all of the uh, shortlist. I'll put a list up of all the shortlist on my on um, on the on the description of the show the show notes mm-hmm. and we'll put up all the and if there's ways to see some of them like like esteban and bet bet what's her name Beth, Beth, Beth david Beth, beth's film we'll put the the link up for there so they can bring their numbers e- even higher up, up even higher yeah, I know another, th- another 34 million right just for um, film wax <laughs> <A couple more laughs> i don't thumbs know up. well after my <laughs> kickstarter my my audience did grow i can tell you that oh, that's yeah. great thank you guys um so if you're again, we said if you're interested, <laughs> you just got halfway through one word and then you. I know on that's it. my style. I'm, that's my <laughs> signature thing. I do. If if I'm trying to, you know, respect your time, <laughs> time. You know, <laughs> I you know it's important. I've taken an hour. Again, if if you're interested in exploring the op- possibility of using the um, the screening room here, the theater, yep. you can email film at kickstarter dot com. You can, and and um, we'll get back to you about that. Give it, give them a little bit of time, and also if you have um, a project that you um, want to try to explore this idea of using Kickstarter, go to Kickstarter.com and check out all. The, there's so much content on there as well, you know, in terms of resources, in terms of support, and um, yeah, and, there's and, and everything, you can, everything you could want. And feel free to reach out to me if you have a question about my experience, because you know, 
It was quite an experience, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> and you can do that by writing film at Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> Good <Or> one. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Liz, and, and, and thank you, uh, Elise, for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks Adam. Adam. We'll do it again soon. Thank you.